Still blessed and highly favored, I see, saints. I type this up because I don't want to mince words. Along your journey, you're going to enter into this type of peace. The peace that Jesus affords you by his spirit is all-encompassing, divine. You will truly be lifted high above, looking down from a heavenly place. Ephesians 2, 6, 7, and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. The enemy is so diligently trying to cultivate the false peace, cultivate to make it a normal, which does exist, yet it is false because it is built upon a foundation of bitterness, unforgiveness, and or pride. The false peace is temporary and Jesus is not there. Yet the peace of Jesus Christ is based in love. It's patient and it rests even in the face of adversity. It lends a hand to those who persecute, knowing and understanding, even desiring to share the better way, capital W, of the Lord. It almost cannot serve the self because it is already full. So it must pour out. And then I heard the word regeneration and I was led to Titus 3. Graces of the heirs of grace. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities, to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Don't forget, that was once us. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration. Through the washing of regeneration. Saints, you're being washed by regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. God is pouring his strength out. He is pouring his spirit out. He is here now. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior. That having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying and these things I want you to affirm constantly. That those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned. When I send Artemis to you or Tychicus, be diligent to come to me at Nicopolis, for I have decided to spend the winter there. Send Zenus the lawyer and Apollos on their journey with haste, that they may lack nothing. And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs, that they may not be unfruitful. And all who are with me greet you, greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. The last scripture I want to share is, is in 1 Corinthians 13. This is about the peace, the, the fruit of that peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, which love is also. You know, these things, they're not separate. All the fruit of the Spirit, they're intertwined. And this love, this great love, this is why the remnant is rising. True love, a heart having been poured out of bitter, bitterness and of self, of pride, of its vain desires and ambition. And, and the Lord poured into it selflessness. Verse thir 1 Corinthians 13, the greatest gift. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have faith so that I can remove mountains, but have not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. 
But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This is a word from the other day. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am also known. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So what do you have, saints, when you have the gift of prophecy or other spiritual giftings? You understand all mysteries and knowledge. You have great faith, which can remove mountains. You have good works. You're a living sacrifice, as you're called to be, and you have love. Well, saints, then you shall know, just as you are known. One day you will know God face to face and know his ways, just as he knows you now face to face and he knows your ways saints and as we continue on this journey it is this peace based in love who is God God is love which lifts you high above the turbulent times to come come up here church where there is rest freedom and love in closing ooh, yes Psalm 24 I thought I didn't write it down in closing Psalm 24 a psalm of David, the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein, for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? This, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Hallelujah. My last note here is just that you should read Psalm 51. Hallelujah. But just perceive it in the spirit. Hallelujah. These everlasting, everlasting doors, uh, these gates, hallelujah, they are lifting their heads. They are being lifted up.